video, inshallah, we will look at chapter eight of book three of the Islamic studies course. And chapter eight, inshallah, we'll focus on the topic of Hajj or the pilgrimage, Al Hajj. Okay. And in Islam, this is the fifth pillar of Islam. Okay, the fifth and the final pillar. So as Muslims, if we are able to, we should complete Hajj at least once in our lifetimes. Hajj is the pilgrimage to the house of Allah, the Kaaba in Mecca. It is the fifth pillar of Islam. Hajj requires pilgrims to perform certain acts. These acts are the acts of Hajj. So Hajj is a uh, ritual, uh, a pilgrimage that has been performed for thousands of years, um, since the time of Prophet uh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim um, and it is done in a certain way. And as Muslims, we perform Hajj in that specific way. Um, Hajj is compulsory for every adult sane Muslim, male or female, once his or her lifetime, provided he has enough money for the journey, he is in good health, the journey to Mecca is safe and does not involve any danger, okay? So when I said that if we can do it, we should do it once in our lifetime, what we mean by we can do it is that we have the money to do it. Some people may not be able to afford to travel to Saudi Arabia to complete the Hajj, um, and in that case, Allah forgives that they were unable to do it. Some people are not well enough, too ill to be able to perform the Hajj. Um, they might be in a hospital or bedridden or unable to move. Hajj has a lot of um, movements uh, and is quite a physical activity. So some people might not be able to perform that. Um, and for example, uh, safe and does not involve any danger during the coronavirus that we had the last two years. Um, Mecca was closed to foreigners and so those people who have formed Hajj were the people who are already in Saudi Arabia and able to safely be in Saudi Arabia. Um, people who were traveling from abroad did not go and complete Hajj during that time because it was not safe and it was dangerous both to people in Saudi Arabia um, and to those coming to Saudi Arabia. Okay so it's if you are able to as an adult then once at least once in your lifetime you should complete the Hajj. Children may go for Hajj with their parents, but it's compulsory for them to perform Hajj again when they became, become adults and are able to do so. Okay, so this is, in Islam, this is an activity that you do as an adult, not as a child. You can complete it as a child, but you will need to complete it also as an adult. The acts of Hajj are as follows. One, Ihram, the formal intention of performing Hajj. A man puts on two pieces of unsewn white cloth and does not cover his head, among other things. A woman should cover everything except for the face and hands. Okay, so when we perform Hajj, we have to, as with all things in Islam, make the intention to perform Hajj. Um, and then there are special clothes that the person who's performing Hajj must wear. For the man, it's the two pieces of white cloth and they leave their head uncovered. Um, the woman covers everything but her face and hands. Two, the tawbiyah. So that's declaring your arrival for Hajj. Okay. Three, tawaf, going around the Kaaba seven times on arrival at Mecca. So uh, we go in a circle around the Kaaba. And you will possibly have seen this on on television or in pictures of people walking around the Kaaba in a circle. This is known as Tawaf. The Sa'i, uh, walking seven times back and forth between the two hillocks of the Safa and the Marwa. Number five, spending the night of 8th Dhul Hijjah at Minna. Number six, staying in Arfa on the 9th of Dhul, of Dhul Hijjah. Number seven, spending the night, night of 9th Dhul Hijjah at Muzdalifa. Number eight, stoning the Jamratul Aqaba in Minna on the 10th of the Dhul Hijjah. And number nine, sacrificing an animal in Minna. 
depending on the type of hajj one is performing. And then 10, shaving the head or having a haircut. Number 11, tawaf al-ifada, going around the Kaaba seven times and performing sa'i between Safa and Marwa. According to the type of hajj one is performing, you will learn about the different types of hajj in detail later on, inshallah. Uh, number 12, stoning the pillars in Minna on the 11th, 12th and 13th of Dhul Hijjah. Stoning these pillars on the 13th Dhul Hijjah is optional. And then finally, the farewell tawaf. So again, circling the Kaaba. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, He who makes a pilgrimage to the house, avoiding indecent and immoral behaviour, will return as pure from sins as the day he was born. And this is recorded in Al-Bukhari. He also said that a pilgrimage that is mabrur is better than, in, than this world and all it contains. There is no reward for such a pilgrimage but paradise. And again, this is recorded in Sahih al-Bukhari. Mabrur means one that is done with the intention of seeking Allah's pleasure only and done in accordance with the Prophet's sunnah. Although visiting the Prophet's mosque in Medina is not an act of hajj, it is recommended to do so. Okay, so uh, that is the with that we've reached the end of chapter eight there are now some exercises for you to complete on the topic of the hajj take your time go through the questions carefully and answer them inshallah and then when you are done um, show them to your parent a teacher or another adult um, and they can inshallah correct your answers check that you've answered them correctly and if there's anything that you don't understand fully they can inshallah explain it to you um alhamdulillah inshallah in the next uh video we will cover chapter nine wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh